it's maybe no surprise that markets are reacting to hotter inflation prints, but they've been happening for quite some time. It leads to questions about whether we're near at, close to a peak in some way. Do you feel as though we're getting there? Well, I, I think in terms of inflation, we're, we're getting there, although certainly what we saw from, from last Friday is we haven't gotten there yet, and I'll be honest, we had thought the peak might be in, but the surprise in food and energy that we know has actually continued into June obviously means we're, we're probably at least a couple of months away from that headline number um, showing a peak. And I was really just disappointed, uh, I think, for those of us who, you know, are hopeful we're beginning to turn a bit of a corner. And I don't mean to say that I think inflation is going to be coming down uh, terribly quickly. I, I just thought we might be seeing a peak and some gradual easing. I, you know, the breadth of the gains that we saw on Friday wasn't just food and energy, which, of course, are incredibly important and, and as I said, are, are likely to persist, but across all of the underlying categories from cars to to rent and and um, and apparel and, and I mean it was just very broad based and again a sign there that it's much more likely to be more persistent than than Fed policymakers would would have hoped to be seeing at this point in the cycle. All right, so Michelle, did it change the Fed's thinking? Did it change it all the way that they feel as though they have to approach this week's policy meeting, or is it one of those things where they've already communicated what they're going to do and they don't want to royal markets even further? Well, I, I think that that's the, a little bit of the box that, that Chairman Paul has put the Fed in by uh, effectively taking 75 basis point increases off the table for the summer. You know, he had signaled that 50 ba basis point increases in both June and July were the likely path. And so it, you know, it's it's sort of difficult, I think, for the Fed to to move to make a larger move, not impossible, but their, their hands are a little bit tied by sort of that that signaling that I don't think was necessary last month. So I, I still, our best guess is still they only go a half a percentage point this week. They use their so-called the dot plot, you know, their projections of where the funds rate is headed. That will be updated at this week's meeting. They'll use that to perhaps signal that while they only went 50 basis points, uh, you know, this week in June, they're more likely and they're all expecting they will end up having to raise the funds rate higher than they had thought um, ultimately than they had thought, uh, you know, a month ago. You know, tr Michelle, traders and investors also have the ability to bet or, or, or kind of forecast or wager <laughs> on where they think the terminal rate or where the end of this kind of thing goes in terms of, the, of a possible rate high cycle for the Fed. Over the course of the past week, it's gone up in considerably by around 50, 50 basis points just in a week alone. Now we're talking about a scenario where it might be closer to three and three quarters percent for the end of this kind of tightening cycle. Is that now priced into the market because we're seeing that in those Fed funds futures? Or do you think the markets elsewhere have to catch up to that? So that's a really good point, Tom. I mean, the, a lot has been priced into the markets in terms of Fed rate hike expectations. Between now and year end, the market is already pricing at almost another 240 basis points, over two and almost two and a half percent more in terms of rate hikes between now and year end. As you said, that terminal rate, how high the funds are will ultimately get, the market is bracing for three and a half or three and three quarter. That's, you know, that's a lot of Fed of Fed tightening, which which makes you hope that in terms of both the bond and the stock market, that a lot of the weakness that we've seen reflects that, and maybe that will start to come to a close. The problem is we just don't know. Uh, again, next month's numbers are likely to on inflation are likely to remain high. I think the market is going to continue to second guess itself and be very unsettled here until we get some more indications either that inflation is peaking or. You know, the downside or the worst case for the Fed would be you don't have signs of inflation peaking, but you do start to see signs of the economy slowing down. And then the Fed will really be in a bind as to what to prioritize. But but I think the markets are worried that as much as that's been priced in, maybe that won't ultimately prove enough that you've got to get to 4 percent or more in order to actually get inflation all the way back down to the Fed's 2 percent target.